It was a case that shocked the nation and made headlines around the world. In 2014, two preteens lured their classmate into a forest during a game of hide and seek, then stabbed her more than a dozen times, all to appease an online boogeyman called Slenderman. Nearly 10 years later, one of those girls who is now 21 years old is asking to be released from a mental institution. So, you know, we have to hope that through age and, uh, you know, through treatment that, that she's been able to, to deal with that and they've been able to kind of figure out what the source of that was and they've been able to get her right, you know, otherwise, you know, they'll, they'll keep her in there, which if she's not right, she needs to be in there. You know, we can't have her running around, but I, I don't know those answers and we'll have to wait and see what the doctors say. And uh, we, we have to assume that the judge will be prudent and make the right decision. The 2014 stabbing took place in a local park in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Prosecutors say Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire pinned down their classmate Peyton Lautner. Then Morgan stabbed Peyton 19 times while Anissa urged her on. Peyton thankfully was able to drag herself to a nearby road and found a cyclist who called 911. Her so-called friends Morgan and Anissa were found by authorities within hours. During their interview with police, the two reportedly showed no remorse and claimed they attacked Peyton to appease Slenderman, a tall, thin, faceless and fictional character. In 2018, Morgan Geyser was committed to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services for 40 years after being found guilty of attempted first degree intentional homicide, but found not guilty by reason of mental disease. Now through a new petition, she's seeking to be released from the state mental hospital, but with conditions. When I was a kid, we always had like Bloody Mary, that if you said Bloody Mary in the mirror three times that she'd appear, you know, we always had kind of this like legends but it never went to the, you know, it never went to the, the, like the absolute, like diabolical stage that this did in terms of that they claimed that when they killed their friend that they were having a sleepover with, that it was at the behest of Slender Man. I spoke with criminal defense attorney and host of the Defense Diaries podcast, Bob Mata. He tells me Morgan would have to go through rigorous court appointed evaluations to even be considered for conditional release. You know, and obviously from an attorney's perspective, I immediately start looking at their age. You know, that's always the thing that I'm looking at in terms of undeveloped minds, which at 12 years old, you know, despite the act itself being a very adult act, their minds are just not developed, you know? So you have that dichotomy there that's hard for court systems and people in general to deal with you know it's like how do you deal with a couple of girls that seem to have come unhinged and you know in terms of doing this to like one of their friends and you know ultimately when i heard the story it was shocking i was obviously very happy that uh the victim survived thankfully i mean the way that it works is that the judge will uh He'll require that she goes through some pretty heavy duty evaluations from a court appointed psychologist and psychiatrist to see if she's ready. You know, I mean, she's been working at this point for, you know, near 10 years to try to, to get right. I think, um, I think she was convicted in 2014, if I'm correct. And we're, we're rolling up on 20, 2024. So, um, you know, I mean, we have to feel the judicial side of it, that they're going to take all the measures necessary to make sure that they're not sending somebody that's continuing to be unhinged, even into her young adulthood, out into society. But again, you know, I mean, it always depends on the doctor and it depends on how much faith you put into psychiatry and psychology in terms of really being able to predict what's going to happen in the future. I mean, it, it's unsettling, you know. I mean, it, it is, it, it makes you feel nervous uh, and you just hope that the doctors that are going to be evaluating her, her are going to be doing a very thorough job. Anissa Wire, who stood as lookout during the stabbing, was also committed in 2017 for her role in the attack and granted conditional release in September 2021. Anissa's conditions include being required to receive outpatient psychiatric treatment. She was subject to GPS monitoring, but that condition was waived in September. So could Anissa's release help in Morgan's case? Mata says it's possible. 
Yeah, I think certainly that they'll look at it. Um, you know, from what I've, I've read, she's been successful with it. She hasn't had any issues. Um, you know, that's obviously going to be uh, something that will be brought up in terms of the judge deciding whether or not it's appropriate for her to be released at this point. You, you know, but that that sticking factor, and we don't know what the state's position is going to be with respect to it, is, you know, again, Morgan was the one that was actually doing the deed. You know what I mean? So like that, it's an extenuating circumstance, which could play against her, um, you know, because it's one thing to kind of tag along with a buddy, you know, that's your friend and peer pressure and whatever the case may be. It's another thing to be the actor, you know? So we'll see. I mean, it certainly can't help that she seemed to be able to adapt, but as far as Morgan goes, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. And again, it's really going to boil down to, you know, powerful evaluations have to be done. The, these just can't be check the boxes and like, yeah, she's good to go. You know, I mean, in which I assume that the doctors that will be charged with the task of evaluating will, will, will do a proper job because they'll know if she's getting released on their word and on their evaluations that if something goes awry, People are going to come knocking on their doors, so let's hope that they do the job properly. This isn't the first time Geyser's defense attorneys asked the judge for conditional release. She reportedly asked the Washington County judge to be released, but withdrew those petitions in 2022 and 2023. I think her probably, like the most likely scenario is that her attorney looked at the evaluation, spoke with the doctors in the facility, and, and got a, you know, because I'm sure Morgan was pushing. You know, I mean, as soon as she heard that, that her, her girlfriend got out, she's like, well, I want to get out. What about me? What about me? You know, and, and it's like, so she was probably constantly asking her attorney, when, when can I file? I, I want to file. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I have a feeling that based on conversations that took place regarding her, uh, her progress, that they thought it in the best interest that maybe she hold off for a bit a bit longer. I mean, that that's the most logical explanation, you know? Um, and I think that ultimately the attorney was probably trying to set it up in a way that it will succeed as opposed to going in and getting turned down. Um, you know, because that, that just, it, it creates a bit of a stigma just mentally for, for, you know, anybody that's going to be looking at it moving forward, especially a judge, you know, if the judge is going to be the one that's ultimately going to decide whether or not she's going to be released and she'd gone in a, a year prior and they say she's not ready and, you know, she was pushing it to get out. It's going to, it's going to cause that judge to take pause and be like, all right, well, what has changed that much in a year? You know what I'm saying? So I think probably they wanted to wait until it was going to be, you know, clear across the board in terms of her treaters and the providers and them saying, look, I think she's ready. Uh, we feel very secure in that. And that's when they decide to run with it. And with a judge ultimately making that decision, a scheduling conference is expected in the coming weeks. And I, I'm sure based on kind of the high profile nature of the case that it's going to be looked at, it'll be scrutinized that in that everyone will be, you know, dotting their I's and crossing their T's to make sure that they get it right. Because the last thing that we want is to put, uh, you know, an unhinged young woman out there who's still got issues, um, you know, because that's like doing what she did, you know, kind of based on things that she's seeing on social media. She was very susceptible to suggestion back then, you know, and, and her mind was wandering. So, you know, we have to hope that through age and uh you know through treatment that that she's been able to to deal with that and they've been able to kind of figure out what the source of that was and they've been able to get her right you know otherwise you know they'll they'll keep her in there which if she's not right she needs to be in there you know we can't have her running around but i, I don't know those answers and we'll have to wait and see what the doctors say and uh we we have to assume that the judge will be prudent and make the right decision. A judge will have 30 days to appoint doctors to evaluate Morgan Geyser before another court hearing. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.